So it's time to make another backtesting video, and there's so many different things that I could choose from. I know that there are a couple of videos that I've promised you guys on stream to make, but today I want to make a video about an indicator that I have found extremely useful in this particular post-pandemic environment. So this indicator is something that I've added to my own trading. I've gone back through almost all of my strategies and added it in there to see if it helps, and I have found it to be extremely extremely useful. It's so useful, I dare say that almost anybody could benefit from adding this into their strategies. So without any further ado, let's talk about R squared. Hi, I'm Speculator Seth, and if you enjoy this video, make sure that you come and check out our live stream every weekday from 8.20 to 10.30 Eastern Time. You can come in and ask me programming questions, and we often backtest things during the live stream, so make sure that you don't miss that. Now, in past videos, I have shown you strategies that are really popular, but don't work. Today, I am going to show you a strategy that at least over the sample period is successful. So if I'm going to do that, I have to give you the big disclaimers. So this is on my website, speculatorseth.com slash disclosure if you want to read it out in full. Hypothetical performance results have many inherent limitations, some of which are described below. No representation is being made that any account will or is likely to achieve profits or losses similar to those shown. In fact, there are frequently sharp differences between hypothetical performance results and the actual results subsequently achieved by any particular trading program. One of the limitations of hypothetical performance results is that they are generally prepared with the benefit of hindsight. In addition, hypothetical trading does not involve financial risk and no hypothetical trading record can completely account for the impact of financial risk of actual trading. For example, the ability to withstand losses or to adhere to a particular trading program in spite of trading losses are material points which can also adversely affect actual trading results. There are numerous other factors related to the markets in general or to the implementation of any specific trading program which cannot be fully accounted for in the preparation of hypothetical performance results and all which can adversely affect trading results. And I want to add to that an emphasis on that these results have been prepared with the benefit of hindsight. We are talking about a strategy that is trying to take advantage of a very specific type of move that I have noticed is very common in the post-pandemic era. And there is no guarantee that that behavior will continue into the future. So with all of that in mind, what are we talking about? We are talking about high R moves is what I call them. And what that means is that this move is like literally a straight line. So if you look at the chart in the upper left of the screen here, you can see this move, it just keeps going and going and going. There are very little pullbacks or any kind of variation. It moves on one trajectory and it just keeps going. Now, for those of you that have been in the market for quite some time, I have been watching markets since 2008 and I've been focused on futures and order flow specifically since 2016. And this kind of move is not common. But in the post pandemic era, we have been seeing it almost every day. Now, I am not really sure what causes this behavior. I have a couple of theories. One is that it could just be a result of the liquidity that the Federal Reserve has created and the fact that traders know there is a backstop. Another possibility is that a lot of retail traders have come into the market this year and retail traders tend to try and follow momentum. But Honestly, for all we know, it could just be random and we have no way of telling if this behavior will continue into the future and if it does continue into the future, how far into the future it will continue. Now, the reason why I like this strategy so much is because this is something that I think we often notice on our own that, hey, we're getting a trend and it's a pretty consistent trend, but most traders don't really know how to quantitatively express that. So this R squared indicator is not something that is very common out there, but I think that it should be more common because it really tells you how consistent the trend is. There are a lot of 
indicators out there that tell you things about trend. For instance, you can see what direction the trend is with moving averages, and you can see how strong the trend is relative to other trends with CCI. You can look at measures of volatility or things like average true range. But the issue with average true range is that you could have a high average true range and it could just be trending up very quickly or it could be just very volatile and moving back and forth a lot. But R squared really tells you how consistent that trend is and that ends up being extremely useful. Now, what is R squared exactly? R squared tells you how closely the price movement resembles a linear regression line, which basically means it's moving in a straight line, okay? So if you get a, a value of one, that means that it is literally a straight line. A value over eight means that there is a large amount of consistent trend or autocorrelation, as we will call it. If you get a value below 0.2, that means that there isn't very much trend in there at all. And this is going to be a choppy market. So I have the code right here. I've made it nice and big for you. We have my R2 added on here, R squared, and a simple moving average. So the R squared will just tell you how consistent and close to a straight line a trend is. It doesn't tell you what direction the trend is. So we're going to combine it with a moving average to see what the direction of the trend is. And based on the back testing that we have done in a previous video, which I'll link here now, I have decided to use a simple moving average. And in this case, we're going to use a longer simple moving average. So in this case, I'm using a nice 90 minute. And I have determined that by optimizing and running many back tests over uh, a number of different data sets to determine what the best value is. Um, same for our period on the R squared, I am using 50. Now, another thing that we need to look at is the stop strategy. And this is an extremely important thing to look at. I have noticed many people will do a strategy where they're just stop and reverse and entries are exits, which can result in a strategy where you could end up taking on a lot of risk. And so you really can't actually trade that strategy, right? So here in this case, we're going to use set stops and targets. So you can see here up at the top, I have a set stop and then and I have a target, which is the stop times a reward factor. That way we can express it in terms of risk and reward. I also have an exit down here. If we cross below 0.8 on the R squared, then you exit. I have that commented out because I found that it doesn't work as well as if you just let your winners run. But if you are looking for something, you know, you want a higher win rate and things like that, having that exit in there can really improve your win rate. And I just wanted to point that out, leave that in there, but comment it out because seeing that trend come off below 0.8 could be a good reason for you to get out and it might be useful for some of your other strategies. Okay, so let's go into the strategy. I've made the numbers nice and big for you to be able to see. And I just wanna point a couple of things about how I back tested this. So because of the pandemic and everything else, you're gonna get some bars within this data set that are just absolutely huge, even on a one minute bar that will be much larger than your target and stop. So to really have anything Thing that's even close to accurate, uh, you're going to want to use a higher fill resolution. Um, luckily, we don't have to use tick replay because then you have to add the data series underneath. And anyways, that is a different video. But here in this video, I am using a one tick high order fill resolution. And since we're only looking to optimize this over the past year, because we know that this doesn't work on past years, and I've gone back and tested that, and it does not work nearly as well in 2019 as it does in 2020. But anyways, since we are only doing one year's worth of data, we can afford to have such a high fill resolution and it won't take forever. It still, still takes a little while. But 
Um, another thing that I want to point out with that is that there is a loss there, the largest losing trade of $3,000, which is significantly more than what our stop loss should be. And I went back and looked at it. There's only one trade like that. And it appears that the reason this trade happened is because it got into the trade and then the market was halted. <laughs> and that's why it ended up losing so much. So... That one, it's really hard to know exactly what would have happened. I would say that the results here are fairly accurate, but there's definitely going to be some differences between the back tests and what would have happened if you had run it live. So now let's just go down some of the stats here. And I have a video about how I look at performance metrics that you can look at here. I highly recommend watching that. So the first thing that I want to point out is that we are doing a lot better on long trades than short trades. And that is exactly what you would expect to see for a strategy of this nature. In fact, it would maybe make sense to just only take the long trades because you can see the profit factor on the long trades is 1.2 and on the short trades is only 1.04. Although in this case, the short trades are also profitable. Remember that markets tend to behave differently when they move up as opposed to when they move down. And that means that you're probably going to need different strategies to account for when markets are moving up and when markets are moving down. The next thing that I want to point out is that even though I have set a reward factor of six, and so we ha do get a few winners that really, really go, most of the time they don't go that far, and the ratio of our average winner to our average loser ends up being two overall. And going in, I have found that there is a a lot of times where it will just get cut off by the end of the session, which is what we want to happen. But, you know, you don't want to hold during that overnight period. It requires more margin. Um, also, there are a lot of cases where you just get an entry the other way. It's held it that long. So the, the next thing, though, is that when you look at the percent profitable and, and you factor in what your, your ratio is, 35% to 38% win rate is, is actually pretty good. Now, if we were going to break even, it would be somewhere closer to 33%. So that's where it shows you that all it takes is a very, very small change in the percentages to end up making a, a, you know, a, a good strategy. The last thing that I want to point out about this strategy is that there is some pretty significant drawdowns. So this is something that I find happens very often to traders that they don't factor in here. Um, this strategy at one point failed 18 times in a row. So if your strategy failed 18 times in a row, would you keep trading it? Would your account be able to handle that big of a losing streak? That is something you absolutely want to factor in. Okay, and last, we should go into all of the fun little charts in the analysis section of the strategy analyzer. Something here in the cumulative net profit that I find really interesting is this curve. It's really kind of follows a square square root graph which i don't know what implications that have but it's very interesting because this is something that comes up again and again and again in the scholarly literature i do think that the r squared would be something uh worth investigating so if you're like a, a researcher at a university or something like hey <laughs> take a look right um Next thing is we should always go and look at these drawdowns. So cumulative net drawdown, we can see here that there has some pretty bad drawdowns. Um, now, there are a lot of things that you can do about that. For instance, we don't have any daily risk management built into this strategy. And I assume that you were take this and apply it to your own strategies to try and improve it. So maybe that can be improved. But as it stands here right now, you probably wouldn't want to trade the pure version of this strategy as a retail trader unless you really, really had a big account because some of the drawdowns on this are quite extreme. 
Um, same with if we just look at the max drawdown, this is just like how much did it draw down on a single day. Here's this day in March the 16th that was just an absolute dismal failure for this strategy. Um, one thing that we can do on those sorts of things is to tell the strategy to just not trade if the volatility or the average true range is too high. Next, I want to look at the MAE and MFE. So um, MAE stands for Maximum Adverse Excursion. And this means once you get in a trade, how far against you does the trade go? And you can see that it is fairly evenly distributed, which is not necessarily what we want. What that means is that a lot of the trades that we get that end up being profitable, we get into them and they still go against us before finally going in our favor. That means that there is probably some room for us to optimize this strategy. If we go in and we add some things to it like order flow in particular or things to do with the rotations, then we might be able to give ourselves a better entry and a better chance of it going in our direction right away and not having to deal with that adverse excursion. On the favorable excursion, you can see here that we are getting some of our winners to run and that is good. And um, well, you know, we have some losers that, you know, were favorable for a time but i don't think that there is enough in there that if we were to set a tighter stop in fact while well, we i optimize it and so we know that that is the case but you you can see here where if you know all of these reds were moved back a little bit it wouldn't really help a whole lot because there would be too many of these other runners that you know would also be brought in and so you wouldn't end up making more money so there's a strategy, and last, I just want to re reiterate that this is a strategy that has been optimized to work well in 2020. There are some indications, based on the performance of the strategy in the latter end of the year, that maybe the market is changing, but we don't really know. Either way, though, I think that this gives you a good example of how you can use this indicator and how it can be effective. When R is very, very high, then you got a large degree of trend and autocorrelation, and it makes more sense to use trending strategies. And when R is very, very low, then it makes more sense to use mean reversion strategies. And this is something that I think that all retail traders struggle with. And here is a quantitative way for you to filter that and determine which strategy to use and not use. So that is why it has made such a big difference for my own trading. I hope it is useful for you as well. And I will see you guys when I am streaming in the morning. In the meantime, stay profitable, friends.